welcome to Modena. So I've escaped to Modena in Italy, in the north of Italy, just for two nights. I lived here for about um, seven months, nearly 20 years ago now. Uh, the year 2000 I came here and stayed until 2001. And it's just so amazing to be, to be back here. All the feelings and the memories coming back to me. Oh, I just had to get the camera out on the walk down from the station and quickly grab some footage. The porticos, I really miss the porticos. One of the things that gives this city its magic. Luciano Pavarotti, Modena's most famous son. This is the Pavarotti Theatre. Theatre to Comune. Via Emilia. Look at where I'm staying. This place was, I think, 85 quid for the two nights. Look at it. I've got a whole apartment to myself for less than the price of a hotel room. It's astonishing. There's a bathroom in here as well. So I'll just settle in before we uh, go exploring this wonderful city. They call Modena the Mink City. Oh, they had another word. I think I called it Tortellini Town. I wrote, actually wrote a little book about my experiences here, which I've published three editions of for myself. Uh, maybe I'll read some bits when I get back. I didn't bring it with me. <laughs> Traipsing through the town, laden down with bags, I got my first look at the place that would be my new home. Wide Napoleonic boulevards breached the old city walls which had long been replaced by an orbital road. Down narrow streets, smells of food came from all around, the aromas of hearty meats, breads, sweet, sweet cakes and biscuits. Right, let's go exploring. I need to get some, uh, I need to get some lunch as well. I'm already getting excited about the prospect of dinner. So many wonderful places to eat here. Modena is one of the great uh, food capitals of the world. Among the specialities are like uh, tortellini, tortellini and brodo back there. There's a thing called gnocco tigelli, which I had here before, which is amazing. Obviously bolognese is from Bologna. This, food, this is one of the best food regions on the planet. I'm just sort of looping around the outside of the center, trying to find my old uh, bearings from 20 years ago. Modena is, by the way, quite, um, the city centre is mostly pedestrianised. You get a few bits of commercial traffic, but by and large, people travel here by bike, which is astonishing when you consider this is the city that produces Lamborghini, uh, Ferrari, Maserati. It's obviously the, the home to the Ferrari racing team, the Formula One racing team, and yet the majority of people travel around the city centre on quite rickety old bikes, actually. This is the uh, church and the monastery of San Pietro, originally built in 996 apparently, rebuilt in the middle of the 16th century. It's about quarter past two in the afternoon, look how quiet it is. This is a place I remember going for coffee in the morning. Bar Tiffany used to be full of students. And they have the best bookshops in Italy. It's funny, I don't remember ever coming in this square. This is uh, Piazza the 20th of September. This is the place, Cafe di Collegio. I can't pronounce it. You can tell that's the student hanging out, you can hear the music. So I have accidentally found myself in Piazza Grande with the crown jewel of Modena, its Duomo and the tower, the Ghirlandina, the leaning tower of Modena. 
The lower part of this magnificent tower was built in 1169. The spire was added in 1319. It's the third tallest campanile in Italy. Inside the Ghirlandina is the prized trophy of a wooden bucket stolen from the town well of Bologna in 1325. Piazza Grande is the heart of Modena. The oldest building dates all the way back to 1046. That was my lunch spot. Al Tramazzino, right here on Piazza Grande with a view of the Ghirlandina. Had a fantastic uh, panini speck and cheese and mushrooms in it. So from memory, this big slab of, uh, I think is it marble or stone here? It's right outside the, uh, the council building, the main comune building. And I believe the story is that this is where anyone could stand upon this stone and harangue, could address a crowd, um, going back to the sort of medieval period. And that is from memory. I think today I just want to sort of reorient myself with the town and just sort of swim in sort of like a tide of memory, which is what's happening at the moment. There's a carving on a door at the rear of the Duomo there, the cathedral, which apparently has links to the Arthurian legends. Should we go and have a look? Yes, here we go, it's here. I'm trying to remember this from the guidebook that I read uh, nearly 20 years ago. But it's this, this uh, door, I think it's called the Porta de Pescheria, Pescheria. I think it's the, the door of the fishmongers anyway. Apparently this carving above the door depicts one of the Arthurian legends. This portal, meant to be seen only by the clergy as they enter the church, pictures King Arthur with two of his knights coming to the aid of Guinevere, imprisoned in Modrock's castle surrounded by the sea. Beneath this are fine reliefs of the labours of the months, along with other strange medieval fancies, a man riding a horse serpent and two chickens carrying a sleeping cat. The Duomo of San Gimignano is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was begun in 1099 and finished in the 13th century. She can resist going inside the Duomo. It's absolutely <laughs> magnificent, isn't it? So this is the main drag in Modena, the Emilia, which I think is an old Roman military road. It's at half three in the afternoon. all these little winding streets. This is a great city to be a flaneur. Just to wander round and round aimlessly, soaking up the city. You can just immerse yourself in the senses of place. I think that's the hospital over there. My wife used to go over there and um, kind of give them English lessons. She used to sit in with the top surgeons over there and they would do their meetings in English. And she would listen in for any mistakes. This is the um, Palazzo di Este Museum. 
Yes, they were the uh, the ruling family here. This, you know, Italy was a, a country of city-states before it was united in the mid-19th century. And the Este ruled Modena. So this is the very edge of the city centre. The language school that I worked at was, uh, was down that road there just beyond, right on the very edge of, of Modena. I used to cycle this way every morning on my bike to work, cycle back at lunchtime and come back again in the, in the early evening for my next set of lessons. Once you get outside the, uh, the historic walls of the old city, the Centro Storico, I think they call it, the historic centre, the vibe changes quite dramatically. I remember walking along here on that first morning we arrived in Modena we'd flown to Rimini, caught the train from Rimini and then we, all we have is the address of the school and we, we thought it would be a historic centre there this image of what it would be like and then we're walking along this road leaving the historic centre behind my heart sort of sinking a little bit obviously in the end I came to love every aspect of Modena not just the obvious kind of heritagey historical bits but this side of the city as well. It's funny, I, I hadn't intended to come out here to the school where I worked, at least until tomorrow maybe. It's sort of bottom of my list of things to do for some reason. Um, but I, can't, I just found myself naturally following my old path out of the city centre to the school. I used to live on the other side of the city centre. I'll show you that tomorrow. It's got a good story there, actually. It's a very grand house. You really do feel like you're on the edge of the city here, don't you? Really strange being here. really reminds me of being on the edge of London somewhere, isn't it? Strange how these kind of borderland places, these edgeland places, have a, a very similar feel. God, this is bringing back a lot of memories now. At the time, what struck me was there were directions here to Munich. It made me realize how close we were to, to Germany. Now, from memory, at this crossroads, it was just to the right here. This was the school that I worked at for about seven months. English Academy, it was called. About 70% of the students came from Tetra Pak. And they've got a big factory near here and they paid for all their employees to do English lessons. I also taught a guy who worked for the uh, Ferrari Formula One team and also one of the kind of senior engineers at Lamborghini as well. It was quite an interesting place to work. And this is the little bar where we used to go between each lesson. The bar here really is a cafe. Well, some people would be in there drinking a beer in the morning. You'd go in there for a coffee in between each lesson and a croissant. The, the local dialect, it's really curious, sounds quite a lot like French, and there was a strong French association. They say bon instead of buono, for example. <laughs> Gal instead of galino, things like that. I mean, we had a wonderful experience here, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy, particularly at the beginning, because it was quite a culture shock to get used to things like... Uh, I mean, for a start, it was bloody freezing. This is, tomorrow it's going to be two degrees. I think in London it's about ten. And also, like Modena uh, is known as the, or was known as the wealthiest city in Italy. They call it the Mink City. So we found it a lot more expensive than we were anticipating, based on our experiences of spending time elsewhere in Italy. And we were only working part time, so financially, it was quite, it was quite difficult. We just about made enough money to survive. We had a couple of little extra jobs that the school very kindly found us so we could just about get by. But things like eating in nice restaurants and things like that were completely beyond our, beyond our reach, you know. I've got to be honest with you, it does feel a bit weird walking around Modena with a Sainsbury's carrier bag. I bought a bottle of water and a bottle of beer and their bags were a bit flimsy. 
one of the fascinating things when I was living here was realising that I stood out like a sore thumb. People would stare at me when I used to ride my bike through the centre of Modena. Because uh, to people here, I looked incredibly English. I looked so foreign. So I this time around, <laughs> I'm bothering trying to blend in in any way. Back in the city centre now. It's looking gorgeous with the Christmas lights. Historically, there's been a strong communist presence in Modena. The city administration was communist for a large number of years, and communist partisans in this area played a big role in the Second World War, fighting against Mussolini and against the Nazis. There's a wonderful band from Modena called the Modena City Ramblers, and they play that brilliant partisan song, Bella Ciao. Very stirring anthem that. So it's the mink city, the wealthiest city, and a communist city as well. There's a beautiful smell of wood smoke in the air that I really associate with Italy. Town really comes alive in the uh, in the early evening. A lot of the shops shut between about two and five, and then everyone comes out once the shops reopen. It's a really wonderful passeggiata for the time of day when people walk the streets. Some sort of procession here, though. Some sort of procession. So the procession has led here to the Christmas tree. I think it's meant to be for children, really. Back to my uh, little apartment in Via Masoni. Up there, I left the light on. So I picked up a map from the tourist information there, Piazza Grande. Here it is, here on the left. I love these kind of civic maps. And I actually brought with me the one that I got from the same place in the year 2000, 19 years ago. Here it is. Obviously, in a place like Modena, they're going to be identical, aren't they? It's quite funny with this one. They've already marked on Feltrinelli Bookshop, which is uh, one of, a bit of a favourite of mine. I love Feltrinelli. Craft beer, even in Modena. Oh no, the restaurant I was really looking forward to going to, it has a fantastic menu of like really uh, particular local food. I could almost taste it, I was going to have the tagliatelle with wild boar. I was going to have, I can't remember what I was going to have for the uh, secondo. I think I was going to have like pork ribs in, in cooked in Lambrusco, local Lambrusco. No chance of getting in there tonight or tomorrow night. I've got to find somewhere else now and it's about half nine. Vecchi 
Ikea Modena. And cheddar, walnuts, cheese, and balsamic vinegar. Of course, they have to have Becky and Borden, right? What a beer. That's the place we just had dinner. And that's more fear. You can see what I mean about this being the city for the flaneur. These night streets are ripe for the imagination to guide the wandering feet. It's amazing you can stand right in the middle of the main street, the high street, Via Emilia, 11 o'clock at night. I have to move for a couple of very slow cars. There's something absolutely magical about it, isn't there? Griffin's Irish pub. I had a semi legendary night in there after Liverpool had beaten Barcelona in the UEFA Cup on our way to winning it in 2001. How lovely to come back to my little apartment. Right, I'm going to watch some Champions League football on the telly now. It's interesting the way that modern has acquired a nightlife because there definitely wasn't one that was here before. Listen to this outside my window. It's snowing. Not very much, but it is snowing. There's the road over there that runs around the edge of uh, the city centre. Centro Storico, historic centre. And this park here, I believe, runs along the route of the old medieval wall. Modern, like uh, a lot of medieval European cities, was a walled city. The wall is now gone, unlike in Lucca. But this park is uh, where the wall used to be. I used to sometimes cycle along this route from the, uh, the house I was living in. And that's where I want to go this morning, so it's quite nice to walk around the edge of the, uh, of the city centre and go back to the house I lived in, in Via Morane, if I can find it, because it's not on the map, it's just slightly outside. This part of the, uh, the road, this part of the outside of the central historical, the historic centre, looks quite familiar, so I've got a funny feeling that this might be the route to Via Morane. You've got this quite big grand places here, which I imagine now are divided into apartments. It's really strange coming here looking for memory cues and uh, get little flickers. But this is a very different kind of terrain to the one we kind of imagined when we thought of coming here to teach English and live and work, you know, you just imagine the kind of historic centre or the rolling hills of Tuscany, that would be my experience before. Those two things, places like Rome and Florence and Pisa and the hills in Tuscany, etc., and the south, Calabria. So this kind of environment of apartment blocks like this and that place, I remember that place. It's an outdoor cinema. See that, it's called Super Cinema. I remember that, so this is the way to Via Morane. Really wonderful old ruined building here by the roadside. It's a kind of grand palazzo now, it's just 
lying in ruins. No doubt that's a favourite with modern as urbexes. Was fantastic. I rang the bell and my old landlady was there and we had a lovely chat. It was a really wonderful moment where initially I couldn't remember any Italian and then gradually as we stood there on the doorstep I um, started to remember bits and we were talking. She said, hey, see you do speak Italian and then she started speaking her English. It was really wonderful catching up after all this time. Oh, what a really lovely lady, what a lovely person. That's such a special part of our lives. I'll talk more about that in a minute when I get out of the sort of slushy snow. The snow is getting quite a bit more intense now. So this place over here is a bit special. This is where I used to buy my lunch or my dinner, take it home. The Mercato Caperto. It intimidated the life out of me to start with until my Italian got a bit better. Let's go for a look. If you're a foodie, you're in for a treat. Pig products are a big thing in modern. And of course, the dish for which it's known, tortellini. It's a kind of speciality of modern app called gnocco fritto. It's like a kind of fried dough that you eat with like soft cheese and prosciutto and other cold meats. It's only really struck me since coming back here how the time that we spent here was a real bridge between worlds for, for me and my wife, between that kind of very transient world of traveling and being kind of rootless and deciding to settle down somewhere and start a family. And that happened whilst we were living here. I hadn't really seen it quite that way before coming back, so it's quite, it's quite, um, it's quite something to ponder on, really. And of course, that the legacy of that is partly like watching these videos that you're watching on my YouTube channel now. The idea that you can explore more in one place in many ways than you can when you're continuously moving. You get a, a deeper relationship with with a place that way. There are many fantastic things to see and do in, in Modena. I just kind of want to wander the streets, picking up the threads of the memories that I kind of left annotated in the streets that I passed over all those years ago. So this is a very special place in Modena. This is the Palazzo Ducale, the Ducal Palace, home of the Este, rulers of Modena. Now it's a military academy. And you used to see the cadets walking around the town in their quite sort of like Napoleonic uniforms with their swords swinging by their sides. Quite a sight in the thick fog when they would emerge in front of you out of the mist. I just had to write when I was living here. It was, there was so much that fascinated me that I didn't really know about. So you get these kind of glimpsed views through open gateways where you see a light in a window. And I was fascinated by you know, what was going on in this city that I didn't really understand. I walked through the portico past the best bar in town. Two signoras swapped gossip about other people's children outside a lingerie shop. A dog ambled past, some students carrying large portfolios. Pigeons on the opposite roof cooed. A fat monk walked in the middle of the narrow road. So I've accidentally stumbled upon a real gem. There's a photograph of me on my bike in this square here. This is a really beautiful little location. And there's possibly another one of me over here as well. I can't 
can't remember when my wife is there. Something very pagan about this. It's crazy. I think he has goat's horns. Still it at home. We were given these little bottles of very thick, very thick, and actually quite sweet vinegar. Sometimes you eat it with strawberries and on ice cream. Or you would uh, dribble it over crumbled Parmesan cheese, Parmigiana Reggiana, which doesn't actually come from Parmesan. It comes from a town near here called Reggio Emilia. It's only called Parmesan apparently because that was what Moliere used to call it, and he wrote it down and became very famous. I think this is another street where there's a photo of me sat on my bike. This is a Via Cesare Battisti. There's something almost uh, Fellini-esque about this scene of a film crew or TV crew setting up their jib in front of the synagogue. This square, I think this is Piazza Manzini, I think. Giuseppe Mazzini. I think he's one of the revolutionary figures that helped create a united Italy, along with obviously Garibaldi. Italy has an incredible history, obviously, a very complicated history and a very complicated politics. I never really completely understood it. It is fascinating though. This is quite a powerful monument here on the side of the Ghirlandina. And it's the photos of partisans, Partigiani, who died fighting against the fascists in the Second World War. I seem to remember they're very proud of the communist resistance against the fascists here because from a very sort of uh, simplistic British perspective we just think of Italy under Mussolini in the Second World War obviously you know allied to Hitler but we forget that a lot of Italians resisted that and fought against them a lot of them lost their lives you know we talk a lot about the uh, the French resistance we don't think so much about the Italian partisans I need a cup of tea to sit down after like, walking around for, for about four and a half hours. Oh, fantastic though, I could have kept going if my legs would have carried me much further, but it's about one degree or zero out there. So time to warm up a little bit with a cup of tea. Time for my uh, evening passaggiata and find somewhere for dinner. Just in, I was going to say bar, that cafe, cafe, uh, the orologio, the clock tower, or the clock. That used to be like the fanciest kind of cafe in in Modena. That's where we went, you know, on a, a, a weekend, and it used to be packed. And of course, now I think a lot of the places look really fancy now, like Cafe di Collegio. Back there was just like quite a rustic, studenty place, and now it looks quite fancy. Quite a few fancy places, like uh, Fauna San Giorgio looks a lot fancier than it used to be. And there weren't that many people in there. Normally that time of day, you rammed, really buzzing and humming. And ended up trying to speak a bit of Italian with the guys at the end. Slowly kind of coming back to me, but I don't feel confident.
that's the place where I had dinner. And that dinner was fantastic. Particularly the uh, tortelloni with pumpkin and butter and sage sauce. That's amazing. For Modena is an amazing city. Uh, it's not cheap though. But you can eat cheaply here. If you eat in the cafes and the bars, and they all do those sort of same dishes, like the, they do the, they call the primi, like the pasta dishes. About eight euros for one of those. This is a great city to walk around at night. It's uh, very quiet tonight, noticeably quieter than last night. Maybe uh, Wednesday night is the big night for going out here. I should say though, it's quite a bit colder than it was last night. It's about zero degrees tonight. Even the gargoyles are feeling the cold. It's a shame it would be too dark to make it out, but here in this portico, there's a bit of old fresco there, which is framed behind glass above it. It says, Es Christoph Oro. Which I think is like Christ of Gold or something. feel the cold in my toes which is often a sign that it's uh, time to get in the warm and then head back to my lovely little apartment just off here. This street by the way was once the um, the Grand Canal in Modena. I think there were a few canals but this was the Grand Canal. Canal Grande. What's really uh, interesting is the way that people sit outside the cafes and bars and restaurants even in this weather. It's minus one today. Okay. It's time to say goodbye to this beautiful little apartment. It's been amazing. By the way, if anybody wants the information about this place, the link to where I found it, uh, just pop a comment in below and uh, in the comments and I'll put the, the link in there. There's just a couple of places I've got to visit before I jump on the train. One of them is in here. It's just the courtyard of the Galleria Civica. Civica, I think. So there was an art exhibition when we were living here and they photographed one person from each nationality of the people living in Modena to celebrate its uh, diversity. Uh, my wife was, I think, the only Australian here. So they took our photograph together and it was on that wall over there on the far side. So the last place that I need to visit in Modena is just over there, the public gardens. This is a bit more like the misty Modena mornings that I remember. I used to come here, particularly on Sundays, because you can imagine Modena is a sleepy town at the best of times. But on a Sunday it's particularly sleepy, so I come here in the afternoon when there wasn't a lot else to do, because the, the old, uh, it was part of the palace, it was used for um, kind of dances and performances by the Este. They have dinners, host grand dinners here in the pub with this big grand gardens built in 1630 something. And it also hosts another branch of the public library. So it was one of the few places that would be open, say, at four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. You could come here and find people and find warmth and look at art as well. I think it's particularly photography. It's just starting to very lightly snow again. 
There's something of that old Europe about Modena. There it is, the station marking the end of my stay in Modena. Well, a bit sad to be going to be honest. Obviously missed the family and really looking forward to seeing them tonight but it's been such a special experience coming back here. A little bit overwhelming at times to be honest with you. But it's been very uh, reinvigorating. Great way to end not only the end of the year but the end of the decade. It was not the best time to leave my hat on the train, but at least I've left a part of me behind in Modena, Bologna. Bologna is where we would come on a Saturday. As I said before, in those days, Modena was quite a sleepy place, and Bologna is a real throbbing metropolis, a very kind of, it's very cool, Bologna. Very cool, lots of big student city, wonderful place.